Uh, we're uh, happy to be joined by the head coach of the Arkansas State Red Wolves going into his seventh year in Jonesboro. Blake Anderson is our guest here on the Williams Tractor Hotline. Uh, coach Anderson, thanks for uh, joining us today here on the program. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Appreciate you having me. So, uh, I mean, it seems like we've talked to a few different coaches. How have uh, how has your team, how has your staff kind of handled the the pandemic time here over the last uh, almost four months or so? Uh, it's been uh, it's been difficult to say the least. Uh, it, we we did get some spring ball in before it all kind of hit, so we're lucky in that sense with uh, with all, all of our staff staying put and a lot of veterans. Uh, so we we got a little bit more done than most, but it's been a long time since so we've been able to work with our guys the way you want, and uh, not that we're any different than anybody else. We're just we're having to kind of find our way through it. They're back on campus uh freshmen showed it this week veterans came back uh, a while back and we went through the you know the testing process and quarantine and all you know all those different uh, you know, steps and um you know we're you know, i'm happy to say guys are healthy doing well and working out it's just it's just unique it's it's it's, it's definitely not what anybody's had to deal with in the past Coach, you're kind of in a unique position in college football in the year 2020 in that you've got not one but two guys at the quarterback position that can play. You know, there are a lot of teams around the country that are searching for one guy. You've got two, Lane Hatcher, Logan Bonner. How do you sort this out? You've got a guy that last year was the uh, the Sun Belt freshman of the year who replaced your starter who got hurt earlier in the year. Yeah, I mean, it's a good problem to have, to be honest with you. I've, I've been one of those offense coordinators and been on those offensive staffs where we didn't have one. We were trying to manufacture one, figure out how to get through a game and get through a season and, and win games, which is difficult. We all know at any level from junior high all the way up through the NFL, if you don't have a quarterback, you, you don't have a chance. So to have two guys that have proven their ability to win, to me, is a great problem to have. It, uh, I told somebody the other day, you know, there's a difference between a quarterback consequence and quarterback competition. I think it's the attitude of the kids and the team, we definitely have a quarterback competition, but not a controversy. I mean, Logan Bonner played great football before he got hurt. He had the same injury that Drew Brees had, had the surgery. He'd thrown 10 touchdowns and had one interception, and even the interception that he had was a bobble ball in the backfield that was intercepted by a D lineman that was standing right in front of him. So he did everything we asked him to do, stepped behind Justice Hanson for a couple of years, prepared himself, and played at a really, really high level. Was probably playing as good as anybody in the country at our level when he got hurt. You know, so he did his job. Lane came in and did a phenomenal job and, and helped us win games and obviously got better all year. I mean, Logan's going to take the first snap with the ones, and then we're going to compete. And, and whoever ends up being the guy is going to make our team better. But it would be a controversy if those guys were working against each other and pulling against each other and, and, and we're back, you know, kind of behind the scenes fighting each other, but they don't. Uh, the team rallies behind both. They both pull for each other. They make each other better. And I think they both know the value of having two really good quality players in one room because, I mean, you're one injury away or you're one quarantine away from not having that guy. And, and, and this year, maybe more than any other, I mean, it could be realistic that you could lose the guy that you have uh, just due to a positive gut. We're talking with Blake Anderson, head coach at Arkansas State here on Ruskin and Zach. I'm sure a lot of people in your profession, yourself included, have kind of discussed that scenario. Does the starter only meet virtually? I mean, how, how does that work? Because if it gets in a position room, I mean, you could lose an offensive line. Yeah, I think the million-dollar question is when we actually get back to normal activity, when we get back into camp, uh, we've got walkthroughs that are scheduled to start on July 24th fall camp on August 6th, what are the details in terms of what close contact is, you know, how do you define it, uh, how do we deal with asymptomatic people, what about people that have had it in the past, you know, all that stuff, it changes daily, and, and if we started fall camp right now, it would mean one thing, a month from now, it may mean something completely different, uh, do we, you know, we've been doing virtual meetings all this time, we've not been in the same room with our players, since we broke uh, for quarantine or for kind of uh, COVID protocol back in March. Uh, they, they work with our strength staff, but in very limited space with, uh, you know, uh, or sorry, very uh, limited people in big spaces, masked up and all that. I mean, obviously, it's going to be hard to have practice that way. But we may still continue to do virtual meetings uh, for some time until 
until the details or the things that we know about it change. We're going to have to adapt with it. And you're right. Who do they room with? Who do they travel with? How close do you get for how long? Do we still use virtual meetings? Do we do we have to uh, keep guys separated throughout the course of the week to, to try to mitigate any issues if a guy is to test positive or a guy does become symptomatic? And we've had guys test positive that have not had any symptomatic players yet at all. And, you know, what do they all get treated the same as we move forward, as people know more, as we learn more? Coach, I'm curious. Most teams will start out with you know a Welder's College in the first uh, game or so. You got to go down to the Liberty Bowl to play Memphis, then you get Howard, and then you got a trip to the Big House. You've got a lot of guys coming back on offense, not so many on defense. Do you sort of? I'm curious about the learning curve that you're kind of going to go through in the in the next you know 30 days or so, getting these guys up to speed because you're you're starting out with a team that's pretty darn good. Yeah, we we play a really good. Really good uh, team in Memphis. I mean, I don't know if they'll be top 25, but if they're not, they'll be really, really close. Obviously, Michigan will be too. I don't know if anybody else is st- starting out with two top 25s in the first three weeks other than us, but uh, it's it's a tough schedule. And, and you know, we, we did get a few practices in, which is good. We have a ton of experience coming back on offense, which is good. You mentioned two quarterbacks that, are, that are, can win games. Our defense is going to have to grow up quickly. Now, we didn't lose any staff on defense. And we're not making any significant, huge changes. But how quickly we can get all the new bodies up and running on defense, how quickly that can happen, how, how quickly we can look like a veteran football team will have a, a huge impact on how we play early. And obviously, we need the offense to go out and play really, really well early so that we can take pressure off the defense. And I mean, you hate putting either side of the ball under that kind of pressure, but that's exactly where we're going to be week one. They're going to have to score points. They're going to have to keep, you know, Memphis's offense off the field. Who runs the ball maybe as good as anybody in the country? It's a uh, it's a huge task, but it's a great opportunity. If you want to be seen on a national level, I mean, play the best and beat the best is the best way to do that. We're talking with Blake Anderson, Arkansas State head coach, with us here on uh, Ruskin and Zach. I, I want to flip. Uh, Zach and I talk about this from time to time uh, about football and the college game and how it's offensive gear. So let's flip to the other side here. How do you play defense in this game? It seems like it's at times hopeless. If you're going to give up 40 points, it's just it's just going to happen. How do you how do you defend what you and a, a lot of your uh, contemporaries run offensively in today's college football? Great question. Great question. <laughs> and it is obviously it is it is increasingly difficult. Uh, I think the premium has become um, obviously tackling in space. They're not. They may not be big collisions anymore. It's about getting them on the ground and making them snap it again. You know, slowing them down, trying to frustrate. We changed defenses midstream, midseason last year due to injuries and what we had in terms of personnel, which I've never done in my entire career, but we had to a year ago. We had to completely change schematically. Uh, so to try to create some some looks that are that are difficult for the offense to see, try to. You know, be versatile, but be simple. But you've got to play great in space. I mean, it is in, in what we're seeing with the RPO game, what we're seeing with the space that's produced, the speed that guys have, and the ability for high school guys to throw the ball like they do now and come in, you know, throwing the ball better than they ever have. You've got to throw the yardage out the window, and you've got to make them snap it again, and it kind of bend, don't break, and, and find a way to make them kick the ball. Whether it be a punt or a field goal, those have got to be wins for us. We, we, have to, we have to take, you know, making opponents kick field goals, we have to take that as a victory. It is difficult to stop people. And, I mean, it still comes down to the same thing. You've got to own the line of scrimmage to do that. You've you got to be able to stop the run. But with RPOs and speed out in space, you better be able to tackle one-on-one and get a guy on the ground, or at least slow him down until help gets there in some cases. Um, and, and that means you got to recruit athletic guys that, that can stay on their feet in space and, and, and kind of play, you know, kind of basketball and grass a little bit. Uh, and then the, the one week a year that you end up against a triple option team or a power I team, then you've got to adjust and adapt and find a way to hang on, you know, that particular week. But, you know, the other eight, nine weeks of the season, you're going to see a lot of grass and a lot of space, and you better be good in it, comfortable in it. Coach, we had Dell Loggins, the OC for the Jets, on about a month ago, and he was telling me that that basically in the NFL game, it's a one-on-one game. In in college, scheme will only carry you so far. If you change the way you recruit defensively, 
you're, you're looking for different kinds of athletes, to, to, to your point, to, to tackle in space, to be better in space and be able to cover these, these jackrabbits that are running down the field. Absolutely. You've got to. Uh, you, you've got to find guys that are flexible, that can change direction, and, and, again, can get. You want physical players, but in the absence of physical, uh, you know, kind of features, you've got to find guys that are athletic enough to stay on the feet, close space, and, and get guys on the ground. Uh, you know, the, the old days of 11 guys, or, you know, 22 guys, 11 on 11, all packed in there in the eye, and, and uh, tight ends and fullbacks and, and kind of playing downhill, Just you don't see that part of the game very much anymore. And even the triple option teams, and when we play Georgia Southern, man, they got speed at all the slot spots. They'll break out into some spread sets enough where you've still got to be good in space. So it's, it's, it's been a premium on on how many guys we can bring into the program that are great on their feet, out in space, speed, so they can cover ground, the ability to stay on their feet, and, and come to balance and, and really slow the offense down. Slow the offense down and recover quickly. Uh, it's just a little different than I think it was when we first started where you were looking for size and power all the time, you know, huge physical traits where you could just blow people up, and it's just not quite the game that it was uh, before. And if you're going to take that guy, he's got to be really, really mobile. Blake Anderson is our guest here on Ruskin and Zach on the Williams Tractor Hotline. i got to ask you about the uh, University of Arkansas has lowered the curtain a bit in terms of playing other schools in the state, except in football, but – I think a lot of people feel that day is coming. Just, what's your thoughts on what it would be like if Arkansas and Arkansas State one day get together on the football field? Oh, I think it'd be huge. It'd be a great game. I think it'd sell out in about five minutes, and it'd be an unbelievable event. Uh, you know, I don't know at what point that happens. I do believe that it will. I think the people that are in charge on both ends at this point see the value in it. I know our schedules are kind of locked up for a few years, but uh, I know we, we, we would move mountains to try to make that happen, you know, sooner than our schedules are, you know, are available. Uh, I just think it'd be great for the state. It and would... uh, I get it. There's there's a risk involved if they play us. Uh, you know, we've been through that. But but I think it I think it'd be great for the state, and, and it would it would build up and pump up the energy around football here in the state of Arkansas like no other game would there. Coach, uh, there was a bit of a coaching carousel at Arkansas State prior to when you got there. It went through Freeze, Malzahn, and, and Hartson, and, and you've offered some stability in Jonesboro. Over the past you know, six seasons, going into your seventh season, what's the biggest change you've seen in maybe the awareness of this football program? Because it is becoming, you know, at, at the very least, a regional brand, but you, see, you guys are on national TV quite a bit. Yeah, we've been really fortunate to get uh, the local out national. We play a lot of midweek games Thursday. Tuesday night games, bowl games. On you know, we've been lucky. Some of our bowl games have been on the only game on that day, the only game on that night. Uh, we we've, we've played well and, and looked well in some of those. And yeah, you know, I just think that that brand is spreading. And when you get into that many households on a night that they're hungry for something to watch and then perform well, I think our staff does a good job uh, in terms of just marketing, both not just my football staff but across the board and. Uh, it's a unique brand. You, you, you don't you don't hear the Red Wolves a whole lot. It, it's the colors stand out. And, and then when we get an opportunity to talk about what we've done, and like you you mentioned, we've had a lot of good coaches come through. We've had a lot of success. We've nine bowl games, five championships in that time, and that, that's that's pretty rare category to be in. Uh, there's only a handful of the teams that have been able to accomplish that. So we're just trying to build on that, and and, and we've done some great things here uh, in terms of you know just the facility enhancement. Uh, the game day environment, and, and then the access to, to what we have here so a lot of people can see us uh, that, that normally wouldn't come through Jonesboro. And, you know, stability was needed. And you don't have five head coaches in five years, and many good things happen. We won some games during that time, but the roster was starting to really fall apart with all the transition. And we're starting to see the evidence of some stability. We're starting to build the roster back, starting to gain the stability. Well, I think the next five years, the next ten years, could be even better and that's saying a lot considering the success that we've had coach when i look at what you guys do as far as scheduling goes i, I sort of harken back to what bobby bowden did in the late 70s with florida state when florida state was an outpost where they would just play anybody anywhere it didn't matter pat hill at fresno state did sort of the same thing as a group of five school are you sort of in that mindset where if you know a michigan comes and says hey you want to you want to come up here i mean you, you can't wait to sign your name on the line and say yeah we're coming yeah we we've, we've had a pretty clear you know, formula. Uh, we, we looked at kind of how Boise went about 
getting their you know their program into the position it's in. It took a while. Uh, it's been be willing to play you know a, a Power Five team anywhere that that is a national brand that gets you notoriety and opportunity. Obviously, you know those guys are going to write you a check, come play them. But we want to win, and uh, you know we we haven't had a a big Power Five win in a while. But you know I think back in '08 they beat A and M at their place. We've seen teams in our league and in the group of five get that done. We've been really close. You know, throwing the ball in the end zone with an opportunity to beat Nebraska a couple years ago. Had you know had Missouri down uh, late in the game with an opportunity to win there. We want to get over the hump and win one of those visible national. Uh, notable games, and, and we will go. We've gone to USC. We've got Washington coming up, Ohio State. We've played, played Alabama and Auburn, Tennessee, Miami, you name it. We've done it. This year takes us to Michigan. And then we want to play two group of five teams across conference lines that show that we can compete at a really high level in the group of five, and then we're going to play typically a one A opponent, and we, we like playing the in-state guys if we can. Pine Bluff, UCA. Uh, we've got Howard coming in this year, which is kind of strange, but uh, we're always – we're always uh, going to kind of stick to that formula, and we feel like if we do really well in that in that uh, four game stretch with a, a power five, two really good quality group of five teams, and a one double A, we feel like it puts us in the conversation of being one of the best teams in the country if we come out of that four and zero, or at worst three and one, in a great game against a power five opponent. That's really the, that's the goal is to be you know the highest ranked group of five team in the country when the season's over, uh, and your non conference is going to have a big big say in that in terms of how you do and who you play. We're talking with Blake Anderson here on Ruskin and Zach. I, Coach, I know uh, myself and a lot of people uh, have watched the way you've handled yourself through the trials and, and tribulations that you've gone with. And right now there's a lot of people uh, around the state and around the country struggling with illness or finances or whatever the case may be. And I, I'm just, uh, uh, if you have a message of hope or, or any, any words to offer up to people who may be struggling out there right now. Well, I can tell you uh, you know, I did not get through it alone, and uh, and it's still a struggle, to be honest with you. It's, you know, every day just get up and, and kind of take a deep breath. Every, all my strength comes from Christ and my, my faith in Jesus Christ and, uh, and in the family and the folks around me. I've got great people from, you know, my kids being at home still. You know, both my older kids moved back home to help me through that and help Wendy through that. I've got great support here around me. But ultimately it starts with, with Christ and just knowing that, uh, he tells us clearly we're never alone and that he'll get us through, uh, you know, anything that comes. And it's the promises it won't be too big for us, but it won't be too big for him. And I just cling to that every day, that uh, that uh, I'm going where he wants me to go and, and I'm going to do what he wants me to do. And we obviously did not get the answers that we wanted through, through Wendy's battle, but uh, but strengthen the fact that we're going we're gonna to be together again and, and that God's going to get us through whatever. It is. And, and I would tell people the same. This is, uh, this is not great times for a lot of people i get that and, and um, but i know that god will get us through and it may not be easy it may be really really difficult but uh, but i do do know that he promises to, to to never leave us and never forsake us and he'll get us through and so that would be my i, I would tell him cling to those you love around you and cling to christ and, and, and just man one day at a time do the best you can do Blake Anderson, head coach at uh, arkansas state with us here on ruskin and zach coach we really appreciate you joining us today thank you so much Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. Blake and all our guests join us here on the Williams Tractor Hotline here on Ruskin and Zach.